Ladies and gentlemen, and good morning to those of you who might be joining us from the central time zones, the mountain time zones, or Pacific time zones. I also want to say good evening or good early morning to those of you who might be joining us from uh, across the pond, maybe in UK or Ireland perhaps. And we also have some attendees joining us from Australia as well. Welcome to today's presentation for the introduction to Power Options suite of tools. Uh, my name is Mike Chopka. I'm the director, <coughs> excuse me, of education here at Power Options, and I'll be your host for this afternoon's presentation. Um, we're going to allow a few moments for some of our other registered attendees to join us in the room today. And while we're waiting there, I just want to remind those of you that are currently on your 14-day free trial, if you do subscribe to Power Options before the end of your 14-day free trial, you will receive an additional 14 days for free. So you'll have use of Power Options for one full month before you're technically billed for the service. Now what we're going to discuss today is tips on how to navigate the site to help you save time with your options research and analysis. Um, we're going to go through several of the tools. I'm going to ask that you hold any questions that you have till the end of the presentation. I'm most likely going to try to cover uh, what you did, uh, have asked there during the presentation as well, and I'm going to leave some time at the end for questions. However, if I'm going through something on the search tool, for example, <clears throat> or if you want me to show how I did something, you have a question on a screen that we're uh, reviewing, please feel free to use the question pod there to go ahead and send me a question. Um, I'm not going to ignore the questions, of course, but uh, it'll help the flow if we just save the questions to the end. But if you have a question on something that we're reviewing or some of the search criteria uh, that we might go through today, then I'll pause and I'll give it a, a further explanation, for example, if we uh, went too fast. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing we need to discuss, of course, is what is Power Options? Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools that was created by Ernie Zarenner uh, about 12 years ago. Uh, he, when he retired from Hewlett Packard, uh, he and a friend of his who also retired from Hewlett Packard at the time didn't have a suite of tools um, where they could effectively search and scan across the universe of options to identify positions that match their criteria. There's nothing on the internet at the time like Power Options. Um, the suite of tools are designed for self-directed options investors. We do support over 23 different strategies. Once you've identified the positions that match your criteria in a given strategy, you'll then be able to quickly compare the risk versus reward with one click using the More Information buttons, which we'll review today. We also have a powerful suite of portfolio tools that will help you paper trade, track, and manage your positions um, whether they're paper trades, of course, or whether they're real positions, and we're going to go over that as well. In addition to those powerful features, we also offer countless educational articles, archived webinars, and help pages, not only on how to use the tools on Power Options, but also on the various strategies and uh, some tips, advantages, and disadvantages of each of the different strategies as well. As I've mentioned, we've been in business for over 12 years, and of course, the staff here, we have many years of combined trading experience. We are all traders here at Power Options. We trade for our own personal accounts, and we use the Power Options tools for our uh, research and analysis as well. My name is Michael Chupka. As I mentioned, I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. I had the great pleasure of working with uh, Ernie and for Power Options for the past eight years. Um, I handle a lot of the coaching sessions as a trial member or a subscriber. Uh, you can register for the free coaching session. That's essentially a 45 to 50 minute phone conversation. We'll walk you through the tools on the site, answer any questions you have about a particular strategy. We cannot give you direct advice on what you should trade or what strategy might work best for you, but we can walk you through the math of a strategy you might be interested in or discuss some of our experiences with those strategies as well. I've co-authored two books on options investing, and I am versed on all strategies in the site. Now, there are a few strategies I uh, personally do not trade, uh, things such as iron butterflies, naked calls, for example, uh, short straddles and short strangles. They don't match my personal risk-reward tolerance, so I don't uh, use those trades in my personal portfolio. However, if these are strategies that you use in your personal account, I can easily show you how to use the tools and power options to identify those positions. Um, do research and analysis, and of course, some ideas on management of those various positions as well. Uh, based on conversations I've had with other clients and my experience with options, even though those are strategies I don't trade in my personal account. Okay, well let's go ahead and navigate over to the main suite of tools and get the presentation started. What we're looking at right here is a main trial account, or a trial account for Power Options. <coughs> 
When you first log on to your account, you'll of course be directed to the main home menu. From the main home menu, you can register for one of those free coaching sessions in the sub tab. We can access the Learning Center, so if you're just getting started, I recommend going into the Learning Center. From that Learning Center menu, of course, you can link to the coaching sessions as well. You can review the archive tip sheets. There are several flash tutorials to help you get better acquainted with the tools on the site. And of course, the listing of the archived webinars. Again, they include web archived webinars both on strategy discussion and on using the tools at PowerApps. This is a great place to get started. Of course, there's also pages for the strategy help and uh, different free links to options education as well. Other features that are available in the main home tab, of course, to help you with your options research and analysis or when you're getting started. We have educational products available in the Power Store. You can follow along with the Power Options blog. If you're deciding to subscribe to Power Options for the free trial, you can link to the sign up bonuses menu. There's just a, a few free links there for additional bonuses. Um, if you wanted to make any changes, of course, to that user ID and password that was assigned to you or your mailing address, for example, you can do that through the My Account as well. Now, in addition to the features that I just pointed out in the sub-menu underneath the main home tab, if you're starting off on a trial, we have these four steps to help you get started. Um, you can download the free user guide. Uh, it's about a 50-page document to help you get better acquainted with the tools on the site. Again, you can link to the Flash tutorials, as we showed, which are also available in that Learning Center menu. We have a variety of free live webinars during the week. Uh, every Wednesday um, at 12 o'clock, we host the Introduction to Power Options presentation that we're going through today. And typically, every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I also host an open discussion presentation. Um, we're sort of a free-for-all. You can come with any questions that you want. We don't have any planned presentations. Um, and, of course, you can sign up for those webinars in the webinars page that was available through the Learning Center. And then, of course, step number four, you can sign up for the free individual coaching session. Now, before we jump headfirst into the tools, what I wanted to also point out is uh, underneath the four steps there in the main home menu, we have the pod section where you can pick and choose various data pods to get a quick overview of the market. You see I have my watch list selected here, the pod for the upcoming live webinars, earnings announced today, and as well as the top stock gainers. Um, in the drop-down menu here, to configure the home page to add a new pod, I can select to view the ETFs, gainers and losers, for today. And that will allow me to see the standard ETFs here, uh, the inverse ETFs, the top gainers and losers for the inverse ETFs, as well as leveraged ETFs, top gainers and losers as well. Some of the other pods that you can select if you wanted to view the 52-week highs or stocks that have hit a new 52-week low today, uh, recent site events, top industry gainers, top industry losers, and top stock losers as well. Once you've selected which pods you want to view, you can easily click and drag the pods to where you'd wish to view them. For example, if I want all my data pods over on the right-hand side, I'll just click and drag those over. And I can also minimize the pods if I don't want to see the data but want to have them locked in place with the header. Just click the little uh, blue circle there for the minus sign. We'll minimize all the data pods and I'll minimize the upcoming webinars pod as well. So you can just arrange these any way you want to. Select which ones you want from the drop down menu. If I want to close a pod, I'll just click the red X. It'll remove it from my field, but then it'll still be available for me in the drop down menu so I can always pull that up later. If you go through the pod menu list in the drop-down menu and you think of something that you would like to see in the available pods, just send us an email or give us a call and we'll see if we can add that data pod in there for you so you can use it as a quick view when you first log on to your account. Okay, let's scroll back up to the top. We already discussed the main home tab. Our next tab in our tab navigation system would be the My Portfolio tab. This is where we can track our open positions in the profit and loss portfolio view our closed transactions in the historical report, see an overview of all open and closed positions in the analysis, as well as view allocation. Uh, we can set alerts and view the summary in the alert summary menu. And uh, there's also an insurance uh, tab here as well, where you, if you have a stock that's moved up in price or you currently own a stock that's down in price, you can use that insurance tool to see some potential puts or some other uh, positions that might help you uh, stop the bleeding or potentially lock you into a profitable position. And we're going to go through the portfolio tools later in the presentation after we walk through the search, the analysis, and doing some what-if scenarios. 
Now, the Power Options tools, of course, are arranged by a tab navigation system. I mentioned earlier that we support over 23 different strategies. I have this basic account uh, arranged by the um, selected strategies from one of our last presentations. So I've married put, and I can access the various tools from the married put tab, the collar, bull put credit, bear call credit, iron condor, and so forth. If I wanted to change these menus, if I wanted to add, um, let's say, covered calls, or I wanted to add naked puts, I'll just click on the Other Strategies tab, and this will take me to a configuration page. The available strategies that I can select for my tab navigation are on the left, and on the right I'm showing my currently active strategies that I've selected for the tab navigation system. And down at the bottom, of course, you see I can also just choose to select bullish strategies. I could select bearish strategies or neutral strategies as well, depending on my market sentiment. Now, before we go any further, I just want to get to know you guys a little bit better, those of you that are joining us today. What I want to know is, real simple, what types of option strategies are you focusing on right now? Are you mainly looking at uh, covered calls and naked puts? Are you uh, researching more into the protective option strategies, married puts and collars? Are you uh, doing current speculation with long calls or long puts, expecting uh, stock or market movements up or down? Are you looking at credit and debit spreads, sort of the leverage positions there? Um, or are you doing the calendar spreads or the time spreads? So just let us know what types of strategies uh, you're currently doing here. And then we'll customize our tab navigation system based on the results. And I've got most of the votes in. Thank you for voting quickly, ladies and gentlemen. I'll leave the poll open for about another 10 or 15 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and close that poll out and move on with our presentation, of course. All right, so let me go ahead and close the poll. Last chance to get your vote in there. All right, and I'll share the results with everyone. So it looks like today we have 14% of our attendees uh, who are currently looking at the protective option strategies, married puts and collars. But the majority of our attendees are focusing on the credit and debit spreads and the iron condors as well. Well, okay, we have most of our choices selected already. We didn't have anyone saying that they were doing long calls and long puts, for example. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and remove long calls and long puts from the menu. And I'll shift now using the arrows here over by the designated tabs. I'm going to move bull put credit and bear call credit spread up to number one and number two. I'll put iron condor, of course, at number three. And then I'll move my debit spreads up as well. Okay, so now we have our credit and debit spreads up at the top five tabs. And then we also included married puts and collar trades. And if I wanted to add another position, let's say those of you that might be looking at iron condors, sometimes also take a chance to maybe look at iron butterflies. Uh, we already removed the long call, so to add another strategy from my available strategies menu, let's just select iron butterfly. And I'll click add to menu, and that would move the Iron Butterfly into my most available tab, or the next available tab that we just cleared. And then I'll click the Save button down at the bottom, and this will rearrange our tabs based on our selections. So now we have Bull Put Credit as number one, Bear Call Credit number two, Iron Condor, our debit spreads, the Protective Strategies, Married Puts and Collars, and we just threw in Iron Butterflies, as it's similar to Iron Condors, but uh, vastly different, of course. <laughs> All right, now to access the main tools, in the in a given strategy. When I hover over the tab, of course, it'll automatically activate the hot tab so I can immediately link just to the search tool, the sample searches. And the search tool, of course, this allows us to screen across the universe of options based on our criteria. The sample searches, um, some pre-themed searches that are established for you. Search by symbol if we just want to look one stock at a time. During the trial, you'll have access to the historical suite of tools, so you can back test um, a criteria in a given strategy, or look up strategies one stock at a time in the historical suite of tools. And then, of course, the custom spread menu. And typically, what I like to do is, when you're just getting started, instead of just using the hot tab link, you actually want to click on bull put credit or bear call credit, for example. And when you click on the main tab, it'll take you to that strategy home menu. So here for bull put credit spread, over to the right we see we have the standard profit and loss. We're in a bullish spread position. We have a capped gain and a capped loss on the position. The first pod that we see in the main strategy home will always be the overview pod. 
Uh, just gives you some basic bullet points about the strategy, and then you'll have a link to a strategy help page if you wanted to review more of the specifics of a particular strategy. The second pod we see in the main strategy home will be our tools description. So again, a search tool. This allows us to search across the universe of options to find new opportunities based on our criteria. Sample searches, uh, themed bull put credit spread reports to show us how to use or to help us use the smart search tool. Search by symbol, if I just wanted to see potential bull put credit spreads on Amazon, for example, or Apple, I would just use the search by symbol tool. We'll take a look at that after we've gone through a little bit of the search. And then, of course, we could link here to the My Portfolio tool, which does have its own tab, and then the back testing tools as well. The third pod in every strategy will be, of course, the Learning Center. Um, for the credit spreads, debit spreads, and uh, iron condors, there's a uh, two-part series. Well, actually, I should just say for the credit spreads and the debit spreads, the four vertical spreads, uh, there's a two-part webinar presentation, vertical spreads, part one and part two. For iron condors, uh, there's actually, I believe, a link to a four-part series that was done by Mike Phillips, the head analyst at Power Options Applied, who recently co-authored the iron condors book in the Power Options Library. And then, of course, you also have some power tips. This one here, just be wary of wide-range spreads. Um, you know, being careful of going too far, taking too big of a spread, and taking on too much risk. All right, let's see here. I just had a question in from Paul. And Paul, I'll get to that in a minute when we get to the actual search tool. So just give me one moment. All right, before we go into the bull put credit spread search, I just wanted to show you, of course, if I click on married puts, for example, we want to see the same basic setup. We have our overview for the strategy. We have our tools pod as well. There's a learning center here with various uh, articles relating to the married put technique. Also on the far right hand side under the profit and loss chart, uh, there's product listing uh, for the married put technique, the blueprint written by Kurt Frankenberg. And then again, you have your power tips. So the main setup, the main home in each strategy will look very similar. You'll just have some different links, uh, text links as opposed to videos, depending on the strategy. All right, let's go back to bull put credit spread. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the main search tool. This is where we're going to start. If we want to access, um, we can start in two different places. If I logged on to my Power Options account and I decided today that I'm going to look at potential bull put credit spreads, I can start in one of two places. If I go to the main search tool, this is going to show me some available positions based on a default search that's listed below. For example, um, if you first click on the bull put credit spread search, you might start off with a default setting for an initial value set. This is just a basic default criteria. This is not a recommendation or suggestions of which positions you should trade. But what we've done here is programmed in some basic criteria that a bull put credit spread investor might use as a default setting. For example, when I'm trading a bull put credit spread to have a higher probability of success, I'm going to go further out of the money. So, of course, one of the default screens that we're using here is we're forcing the position to be at least 5% out of the money or more. In the center section of our greater than less than columns in the parameter field, you see here that we're looking for a basic return of about 10%, some option volume today, just greater than zero. And we have some basic stock criteria. We're looking only for those stocks that have grown 5% of last year to this year, have a price to earnings greater than zero, and an average broker recommendation of less than 2.6. That's based on the Zach scale, where, of course, one is a strong buy, two is a buy, three is a hold, four is a sell, and five is a strong sell. Now, you notice, of course, there's over about 15 to 20 different option criteria here in the center, and about 20, different, 20 to 25 different stock criteria that we could use on the right. In addition to that, we could screen by sectors and industries, screen through specific recommended lists or stock lists, use simple moving averages and Bollinger Bands. Now, why are there only three or four basic criteria? Because these searches are just, used, are just created excuse me, as a stepping stone for you to create your own personal search. Again, we're not making recommendations or suggestions. Now, we saw on the profit and loss chart earlier, if I'm looking at a bull put credit spread, I have a capped gain on the upside, a minimum risk on the downside. The when I open a spread that's out of the money, a credit spread that's out of the money, I have a higher probability of success. Um, so you want to adjust the criteria based on what you're looking for. For example, if 5% out of the money is, 
not as conservative as you'd like. If you'd like to go deeper out of the money to start on a credit spread position, we would just click in the field for percent out of the money, and I'll just change this to be greater than 8, 8 to blank. Now our option expiration time frame, it started in the next available full expiration month for January, but if I wanted to include some December positions, which expire in about 18 days, I'll simply click the drop-down menu here. I can select December or other available months, or I can do a wider range, and I'll select all months, for example, but then I'll use the days to expiration field to limit it to be between zero and let's say 50 days to expiration. Let me just scroll up real quick. Is it January? No, it's 52. So let's go ahead and put in zero to 55. So we'll include January and December positions. Now, one slight suggestion I do always make to my customers during a coaching session or during these webinars, of course, is if you're doing credit and debit spreads, um, maybe even iron condors on stocks, for example, or you're doing covered calls or even standard collar positions, any of the income generating strategies, one thing you might want to look to avoid are positions that might have an earnings between now and expiration. You don't want any sudden surprises or something out of the blue that you can't control to see a sudden drop on the stock if you're in a bullish leverage spread or a sudden gap up in price if the earnings are really strong if you're in a bearish leverage spread. So typically what you might want to do is just avoid an earnings date. So I'll just check the box there for not between now and expiration. If I'm doing covered calls and I want to avoid early assignment, I might also use the ex-dividend date field here to look for positions that don't have an earnings date between now and expiration. Now in the center section, if you wanted to look, for example, for a higher return again, you can just click in that field and put in your values of what your minimum requirement is for return or annualized return. Net credit might also be important to you. In addition to the return, if you know what your commissions are, your commissions maybe are a little bit higher than maybe around $20 per contract or $15 per contract. So you know if you're trading a credit spread and you're only planning on doing a few contracts, you're going to want at least a net credit of 40 or 50 cents. Well, we'll just plug that in. So I'll go ahead and put in a net credit of 50 cents to blank, which is greater than 50 cents. I'll only see credit spreads now that have 50 cent net credit or higher. If you wanted to have more liquidity for option volume today, let's go ahead and put in at least 10 contracts. I can also put in open interest. If I wanted a higher open interest, say at least 50 contracts, we can plug that in as well. If you focus on implied volatility, you can put in specific requirements for the implied volatility of the sell option or the buy option or the implied volatility ratio between the two. Uh, Black-Scholes values to measure if the option is overvalued or undervalued, we can include that as well. And of course, if we wanted to put in specifics for the short option delta, if I, only, if I wanted to be really far out of the money and I'm following a screen where I'm looking for, let's say, credit spreads where my short option delta, the option that I'm selling, um, can't have a delta of greater than, let's say, 0.3, for example, or in this case with the uh, <clears throat> bull put credit spreads, of course, it'd be screening for a negative delta. We can plug that in as well. Now, over on the right is most of our stock information. If we have a limited range of what we want to look for for stock price, um, I mentioned we put in a default for earnings per share growth and price per earnings. If you wanted to screen for stocks that had a specific beta, and as the stock's volatility relates, of course, to the volatility of the S&P 500, um, average stock volume, for example, one of the important ones is the credit, uh, for credit spreads, excuse me, is the probability. If I only want to see credit spreads, uh, that have a theoretical probability of at least 75% or higher, that in this case for the bull puts, the stock would stay above both strike prices at expiration. I'll just plug in a probability. And we can also use some technical indicators as well. If we wanted to screen for stocks that have specific RSI, uh, Bollinger Band range, for example, or in this case for the um, bull put credit spreads, if I only wanted to see stocks that were in an uptrend, for example, stocks that were trading above their SMA 50, I'll just go ahead and select that, stock price above SMA 50. Now, if you wanted to avoid trying to put in the different criteria for the stock, let's say you like to track stocks in the IBD 100 list, maybe you like to track um, five-star recommended stocks by Standard & Poor's, you only like to follow stocks in the NASDAQ 100. In the recommended list field at the center, we can simply click that drop-down list, and we see we can screen just by the Dow 30 Industrials, IBD 100, if you wanted to look just for credit spreads on ETFs or indexes, we could select just to screen against indexes, ETFs, and holders. NASDAQ 100, for example. 
a standard Emporer's 100 or 500 stocks, the five-star stocks, and we even have some value line lists here included for you as well. So you, rather than trying to build a search based on the stock criteria of stocks that you'd like to look for, if you want to follow a specific stock list, you might select one of the lists there in the recommended list field, or you can create your own personal list. If you have a specific list of stocks, let's say 50 to 60 stocks that you just track on a regular basis, you can import that list, create your own personal list, and just screen against those stocks. You can also remove stock lists as well. If I wanted to remove stocks in the NASDAQ 100, or I didn't want to see the indexes or ETFs, I could select to remove that from the drop-down menu as well. Now, once I've made the changes to the search criteria that match what I'm looking for specifically, we can just go ahead and click on Submit These Settings. This is now going to rerun the search, and it's going to show us only those bull put credit spreads that match our new criteria. Now, I am sorting this by the highest potential return to lowest. If I wanted to change that and sort it by the highest probability, which would sort of flip the results, it wouldn't change the number of results that I have, but it would flip the results, uh, naturally, the ones that have the highest return are probably going to have the lowest probability. So if I choose to switch it and screen by the highest probability to lowest, I probably have the lowest return positions on the top and the highest on the bottom. All right, before we go through the listed results tables there um, and go into the see more or less columns field, I'm going to scroll back down. And let's say just after I ran this search, I was comfortable with the results. Uh, I like the way this looked. We're just going to excuse me, I'm going to want to go ahead and save my specific criteria. And Paul asked earlier, how do we execute a save search of our own? Does clicking on search do this, that, or is that a default search? When we started off, Paul, we did go into the search menu, and it pulled up a default search for us. If I started off in the sample searches menu, we'd see the same type of field that we're looking at right now, but some of the sample searches, those pre-themed searches, would have a parameter field populated with criteria that match that theme search. But as soon as I change those criteria, as soon as I made some adjustments here, remember we changed the net credit, range out of the money, look for stocks that don't have an earnings between now and expiration and so forth. Once I've submitted that search, I've now sort of created my own personal search. We've moved away from the default search. Yes, we use the default search or the sample search as a stepping stone, but now we've created our criteria. So what I want to do is go ahead and click Save. When I click the Save button at the top of the parameter field, it'll pull up a new box to prompt me to enter in a search name and a description. So we're just going to call this December 2nd Search. And we'll call this uh, Minimum Net Credit, Average Probability, you can just put in a description if you want to. Now, once I've put in my name and description, Paul, go ahead and click Save This Search, the text link here next to that field. It's going to rerun the search for us. But now, every time I come into the main search menu, if I logged out right now, logged back into Power Options, and went back into the bull call, uh, I'm sorry, bull put credit spread search, it's going to pull up the last saved search that I had. So we'd have the December 2nd search is always going to come up for us first now, but I can always change these criteria to create a new search anytime I want to. And of course, I can always toggle back to other safe searches I have, uh, bull put credit spreads for September, for example, um, vertical spread presentations, webinar search one, or the default searches, bull put number one, or an initial value set. So once you save a search, Paul, it's always going to remember the last search you were on when you leave the strategy or when you leave the strategy search and then it will come back up. Susan, thank you. I'm, I'm ahead of myself. I paid my bills last night, so I was thinking that uh, yesterday was December 1st and today is December 2nd. So thank you, Susan. I apologize for that. Um, uh, Wayne wanted to know, Mike, is the price in this feature a real-time quote? Yes, what we're looking at right now, Wayne, is the, this trial account that we're using, this webinar account, is using the real-time quotes. Um, let's just see if we can see an example of that real quick. Now, the Power Options real-time service, which is about uh, $79 per month or $800 for the year, is not streaming real-time, but every time we refresh the page or rerun a search, we're going to see the numbers at that very instant. So let's just take this first result. We've got Win Resorts at 105.51. Uh, we can sell the January 95 put for 256. 
by the January 92 put for 201. So total net credit is 55 cents for a net credit of 22.4%. Now, I can choose to refresh the browser or I can hit the search button again. Let me just go ahead and refresh the browser. So stock at 105.51, 256 and 201 and net credit of 55 cents. Okay, so let me go ahead and just refresh my browser. Win is now at 105.50. Put change to 257. Net credit is now 56 cents. Okay, and let's refresh once more. See if we get another change. Ah, win is now at 105.57. 257 for the put, which didn't change, so the net credit is still 56 cents. So it's not streaming real time, but every time you hit submit or refresh the page, Wayne, you're getting the numbers at that very instant. All right. Now, what did we do? We went into the search. We used default search as a stepping stone. By the way, this is the same process I would do in every strategy. If I was doing married puts, if I was doing collars, um, I'd start off in the search or with a sample search menu and looking for new positions. I'll adjust the criteria based on what I want to see. Now, once I have the results, am I going to go ahead and take the first result that's listed? Remember, I was sorting by highest return to lowest. So I'm going to jump right, am I going to jump right in and go ahead and trade this win position with a potential return of 23%, 56 cent net credit? Well, I'm missing some things, aren't I? I don't see the maximum risk, and I was screening by probability, so I don't see the probability here either. Okay? So what I want to do next, any of the criteria that you can filter by in the parameter field where we just adjusted our criteria, I can select a view in my results table to help me with my analysis. So to do that, we'll just click the See More, Less Columns button up here at the top. And this will pull up a configuration page for us. And I have my stock information. So if I wanted to make sure that I want, if I wanted to view the average stock volume for the position, for example, or maybe the shares outstanding, or if I wanted to view beta, um, for example, or any of the other fundamental and technical criteria, we'll just check the box next to that field. For the option information, I'm probably want to going to see the maximum risk. I'm going to want to see the probability. That's going to be very important to me. And if I wanted to, I could also select to view the um, volume, uh, the sell option volume or buy option volume, for example, or the previous option volume, or I can view the open interest as well. That range out of the money, I might uh, percent out of the money, I might select that as well. Now, once I've selected which columns we wish to view, I can scroll down to the bottom and click Save and Return, or I can choose to reorder the columns. So, when I click Reorder Columns. What I'd want to do here is I'm going to move the probability up near the um, net credit and the calculated return, as well as the maximum risk. I'm going to put that next to the net credit. So you can just sort of uh, move these around based on how you like to view the screens. And once I've done that, I'll click Save and Return. We'll be prompted to refresh our page. We still have the same search results, and we still have the same search listed below. <clears throat> and we see that the win position is still at the top, and now we have a net credit of $0.57 because the uh, bid price of that 95 put went up to 258 But now we have our maximum risk, so we're looking to make $0.57 cents with risking 243 we have a 76.8% probability, our percentage out of the money, we're about 10% out of the money, 9.97%, and then our other stock criteria that we've selected as well, the average stock volume and the beta. All right, Paul asked something, um, how does it calculate the probability? For every option that we're tracking, all 350,000 plus calls and puts, uh, we calculate the theoretical probability that the stock would be trading at or above that strike price on the expiration date based on the past 52-week trading range of the stock. And then take a standard deviation of that value, and it will allow us to apply a bell curve. So we can say, based on where the stock has been in the movement of the position of the last 52 weeks, what is the likelihood that it will be trading at or above or at or below a specific strike price in the next 20, 30, or 50 days? Now, that being said, when you're going through the filters on the screen, or the parameter uh, filters, or you're looking at the columns, if you don't know what a specific filter means or a specific column means, you can hover right over the column heading. Or if we're down in the parameter field, I can hover right over the text link. And this will give you a pop-up definition uh, that describes the criteria. And if you click on it, if I actively clicked on probability, 
that would link me to the glossary page where it would give me a full description or a full definition, I should say rather, of that particular field. Okay, now again, let's just review real quick. We came into our strategy. We used the default search as a stepping stone. We adjusted the criteria based on what we wanted to see. Once we ran the search, we saved the search settings so we can always come back to it at a later date. If we want to look for new positions next week or next month, for example, we saved our settings. So we don't have to go through that again. And then we use the See More or Less Columns button, of course, to add in some of the criteria that we might use in our analysis that we were filtering by. If I'm using a filter for probability, I'm using a filter for simple moving average, I probably want to see that in the results field. But I'm still not going to go ahead and jump right in and take this first position that comes up. What I want to do now is further research and analysis to see is this, not only is this a strategy that matches my criteria, okay, I've got my 23.5% 23.5% return, net credit of 57 cents, probability of 76.8%, for example, but now I want to make sure is this stock what I want to trade? Do I think this is actually a bullish to neutral stock? And yes, I put in some criteria to look for stocks that are in an uptrend, but you might want to use other uh, analysis. You might look at MACD. You might look at stochastics. So the first thing I do after I have my results is we'll go into the more information button on the far left hand side. And what I'm going to do here is I'll select charts and I can go to the one year snapshot or big charts. I typically prefer to go to big charts. It's a free charting service that you can link to, but you can customize it as well. Um, over here on the left, here's just a basic one-year chart. I can change it if I wanted to view, let's say, a six-month chart or a two-year chart, for example. And you can use different indicators as well. So if I wanted to look at specific moving averages, or if I wanted to look at Bollinger Bands, for example, also things such as MACD, uh, slower, fast, stochastic, Williams percent R, you can select to view those on the specific screen. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, I just had another question coming. This is more specific to the strategy. Paul wanted to know, in general, is there a recommended time frame to enter bull put credit spread or other types, five weeks or three weeks? Um, in those vertical spread, uh, I'm sorry, Paul, at the beginning when we were looking at the bull put credit spread menu, and I showed in the Learning Center, there are two links to vertical spreads, part one and part two. That's discussed a little bit, or that's discussed in those fields. Typically, if I'm doing a credit spread or a covered call, naked put, any income generating strategy, I'm staying under 45 days out in time. Now, this is one of those middle of the road ones where December's a little bit too close and January might be a little bit too far from my personal preference. I still might be looking at January. In essence, if you can find the return that you want, it's always best to go shorter time. If I'm able to sell month by month by month every 30 days, I'll always have a higher annualized return on my spreads than if I sold a spread that was two months or three months out in time. The initial net credit would be higher, but the way that options are priced is as I go further out in time, I'm lowering my annualized return if I'm selling positions and I'm increasing, um, and I'm also at the same time though, if, I buy, if I'm buying positions, if I buy further out in time, I'm lowering my average cost per day. So anytime I'm doing some of these spreads, um, <clears throat> excuse me, anytime I'm, I'm looking at these types of spreads, I'm typically only 30 to 45 days at a time. All right. So without going too much deeper into what I'm looking here at the chart, if I didn't like this chart or didn't like the pattern, I'll simply close down big charts and I'll just move to the next one. So here we have price line, high price stock of course, 40764. And I'll do the same process. First thing I'll look at is the stock chart. If I like the chart, I'll go ahead and place the trade or I'll go ahead and continue to research and analyze the position. And if not, they'll move on to the third position. Wayne, oh, I'm sorry, Tim popped up. How does the software determine the spread between bought and sold strike price? Well, my criteria filtered that, Tim. Okay? I didn't put in any restriction to the range between the strike prices. I told the system to find me spreads that had at least a 10% return, minimum probability of 75%, uh, some of the other filters I put in as well. You see here, we're looking at the top win position. Um, and I don't mean win by it's going to necessarily be profitable. I, that's just the symbol there. Here's the top one with the 95.92. Let's just look further down for a minute. I saw another one here. Further down, here's the second one. This still matches my criteria. It's a 92.87. This is a five-point spread. Still matches my criteria, Tim. It's got a higher than 10% return, net credit of greater than 50 cents, and uh, 
probability of 83%, which is greater than 75 I selected. I didn't put any restrictions in that I only want to see five point spreads or two point spreads or three point spreads, or I only wanted to have a risk less than five points or less than 10 points, but that is easily done. So if I scroll in for credit spreads, if I scroll back down to the bottom, okay, Underneath the range out of the money, I can select to look for a strike difference range. So if I only wanted to see strikes, strike differences that were greater than 2 or greater than 250, for example, or let's say greater than or equal to $2.50 between the spreads, I could select that. If I was doing ETFs and indexes, and for example, I wanted to see strike differences that were less than $2, I only wanted to see one-point spreads, we could select that as well. You can also do this using the maximum risk field in some range. I know that if I was doing a 10-point spread and collecting 50 cents, my maximum risk would be around 950, for example. If I didn't want to see spreads that were more than 10 points, I could simply use the strike difference to select that, or I could limit my maximum risk to be less than, let's just say, 950. And that's just another change we can make, and we'll submit these settings. By the way, that second price line trade we were looking at, that's going to be removed as well. Ah. Did I do that right? Maximum risk of less than 950. Oh, huh, that was interesting. Oh, I can't have anything that has a strike difference less than 2. That's, that's why. So let's go back to any there. I apologize. I didn't realize I left that there. Now let's go back to 950. How about that? So the short answer to your question, Tim, is it's going to determine the strike differences based on what I tell it to. Any of the criteria that I put in, that's what's going to restrict the strike differences. We're building for credit spreads. We're building essentially 1.5, I think it's like 1.25 million bull put credit spread combinations and 1.25 million bear call credit spread combinations every 15 minutes. So if there's a spread out there that matches your criteria, whether you want to use one point spreads, five point spreads, or 10 point spreads, whatever I put in this criteria field, the system's going through that entire list and pulling up only those ones, the 1.25 million spreads that match my specific criteria, what I told the system to find me. And as you see, of course, with just a few changes, I have narrowed this completely down to just 39 results. So there's 1.2, 1.2 million, 1.25 million spreads. Um, that's what we're looking for. Um, okay, Susan, I think you're misunderstanding some. Susan asked, could you quickly say those figures again for strike spread? Um, I'm not making a recommendation or suggestion of what to put into the field at all for credit spreads. What I'm saying is that if you wanted to look at 10-point spreads, if I only wanted to look at spreads that had a 10-point strike difference, I could easily just go strike difference to be equal to 10 points. If I'm doing ETFs, for example, which are mostly single strike spreads, and I wanted to limit it to only, let's say, less than two strike differences, um, two strikes between the spreads, well, I might just select less than two. Or if I'm doing spreads on ETFs, and I wanted to make sure they're greater than five points, I would just use the strike difference field to select greater than five points as well. I, I don't have any particular preference or no particular recommendation. Um, that's, it's just what I'm looking for based on my, my criteria. I know that most customers I talk to who do ETFs, by the way, Susan, usually tend to focus on just one or two strike spread differences. Um, when I'm doing standard stocks, I'm usually looking at just 2.5 to 5 point spreads. That's my personal preference. Um, of course, when we go up higher into the indexes, some of those uh, broad-based indexes, when you're doing iron condors, you can't do that because you only, they only have 15 point spreads or maybe even 25 point spreads as a minimum once you get above $2,000, for example, on the listed indexes. So it becomes tough. And the other thing I was mentioning, uh, Susan, is that you instead of using the strike difference field, you can also just use the maximum risk range. Because uh, remember, the maximum risk in a spread is typically defined as the difference in strike prices minus the net credit. When I put in this maximum risk of less than 950, that took out essentially any of the 15-point spreads or 20-point spreads that might have been in my results, such as the price line position that we saw originally, the second position that was listed there. That had a 15-point spread, and the max, I'm thinking it had a 20-point spread, I apologize. And I saw quickly the maximum risk was about 1680. So we filtered that out there by using the maximum risk field. All right. So we have our results. Use the more information button to look at the stock chart. Next thing I always do is typically go to the company news and information. I want to take a look at the news, um, see if there's any headlines out there that might cause me hesitation for entering the position. Take a look at maybe the last earnings and events or the profile. 
Now, when I'm doing a credit spread or a debit spread, um, even if I'm doing a married put or a collar, one thing I'll do is if I've gone through now and I decided I like the chart, the stock chart for win, and I didn't see anything in the news or the headlines that made me uncomfortable, I might get into more detail by doing the stock research or the individual option research. This will show you all the data we have for the stock or the put. But what I'll do next is go into the search by symbol tool. Now remember at the beginning we talked about if I had a stock symbol in mind and I'm going to look at bull put credit spreads on Apple or Amazon, I would have clicked on the search by symbol tool first. Well now I've identified this uh, win position, uh, that particular win position that was looking at the 95, selling the 95 put and buying the 92 for January, which is listed right here. Again, there's our, about our 24% return net credit and our probability here. What I want to do now is that now that I have a gauge on the stock chart and where I think the stock might be trading in the next uh, 30 to 50 days at January expiration, I can kind of decide, do I want to be more conservative now or do I want to be more aggressive? Yes, this one, this original spread that we found matched our criteria and had the highest return, but if I wanted to be more aggressive after I looked at the stock chart, I could maybe now say, well, what about the 97.95 spread? And this is about a two-point spread now. Net credit is 43 cents. Okay, so it's a little bit below my, um, excuse me, it's a little bit below my 50 cent requirement, but it's a 27.4% return, and I've got a 71.9% probability. So it's not the 75% I was screening for, but after I looked at the chart, and I said, okay, well, I think this stock's going to really move up, or I'm really confident this stock's going to probably stay higher above 97 or maybe even 100 so I can go to the search by symbol tool now and compare what would the probabilities be if I did do the 100 and the 95 or the 97, 95. Or if I like the stock but I want it to be a little bit more conservative, we can compare it to the other positions. What about just a straight five point spread using the 95 put and the 90 put? Well, my return's a little bit lower. I have the same probability because I'm using the same short option. Uh, but my net credit's a little bit higher now because the cost for my 90 put would be a little bit lower. Of course, my maximum risk is going to increase as well. Or if I wanted to be more conservative, get closer to those higher probabilities, um, see here I can take a look at the selling the 90 put for $1.61, buying the 85 put for $1.04. This gives me the 57 cent minimum net credit. I have a 12.9% return and an 86.3% probability now. So you can just run your different comparisons after you've looked at the stock chart. If you want to be more conservative, more aggressive, or stick with that original position that came up on the criteria. All right, so let's close down the one strike tool. The Pretty much the last step I'll do when I'm analyzing a position, whether it's a credit spread, debit spread, or one of the other strategies, I'll go through the same process. Stock chart, company information, I can look at the detailed research tools, I'll go into the search by symbol tool, and now what I want to do is take a look at the profit and loss chart. Now the reason why I link to the profit and loss chart is number one, it gives us a graphical view of the position. So we have win now up at 105.45. Um, you know, we're selling the 95 put in this example, we are buying the 92 put, so I see the hockey stick chart. And in addition to the hockey stick chart, what I see here with this curved red line is it's showing me the profit and loss of this position at the halfway point. 12.28 is halfway between today, December 1st, and uh, January expiration. Um, so it's just giving me the monetary values that the stock was trading at the individual stock prices what would I expect to see at the halfway point. But underneath of the profit and loss chart, I can run basic what-if scenarios. What would happen if the stock drops, let's say, eight points, drops down to about $97 in the next two weeks? Well, I'll just put in my expected stock price of $97. And let's see, we'll go ahead and select uh, 1215 here and click on Calculate. Oh, it's going to redraw the chart for us. And this new curved red line now represents what our bull put credit spread would look like on 12.15. And then over on the left is the theoretical gain or loss we'd have on the position uh, based on the calculated theoretical value for the short put and for the long put. Of course, we could run that what-if scenario, what happens if the stock moves up eight points and went up to $113 now in about two weeks to 12.15. And redraw the chart for it. Keep the, the chart will stay the same, of course, at that point. But then down below, it'll show us the, the theoretical gain on the short put and the theoretical loss on the long put. So what would our total gain be on the position? So it just allows you to run some what-if scenarios. 
Now also when we linked over from the search menu, the tool didn't know if we were trying to simulate with five contracts, 10 contracts, or 20 contracts, which just assumed one natural contract of the short and the long put. If I was doing a covered call, it would assume 100 shares and one call contract, for example. But if I wanted to look at the monetary calculations, if I did 10 contracts or 15 contracts, we can just scroll up to the top, and we'll just go ahead and change our quantity um, for the various legs. Click Submit. The profit and loss chart is going to look pretty much the same as far as uh, ratios of gain to loss goes. The only thing different now is the monetary value of gain and the monetary value for potential loss. So just run your what-if scenarios, your catastrophe reports, using the profit and loss chart before deciding to enter into your trade. Okay, so we went into the search, created our criteria, saved our search, used the see more or less columns button up here at the top to add the columns that we might use for our research and analysis. Once we've identified the position, we use the more information button to analyze the chart. Is this a position, does this chart make me feel comfortable for a stock I'm looking for on a bull put credit spread, for example? Um, we looked at the profit and loss chart, of course, the company news. And then our last step, of course, now that we've done our analysis, is we go ahead and place the trade with our broker. If you're using Options Express or Brokers Express, you can use the broker link here um, to do a bull put credit, buy the put or sell the put. Or if you're using a different broker, just log on to your broker, place the trade. And when you come back to Power Options, what we'll want to do is select Add to Portfolio. Now, when I first click Add to Portfolio, what this will do is give me a selection. Do I want to put it in one of my existing portfolios? And we have several here on this account because this is the account we use for the webinars, of course. If this is the first time you're ever using the portfolio, um, you'll just be prompted to enter in a name for your new portfolio one. So you can call it Test Portfolio, for example. Uh, for this example, we'll go ahead and put it into the Credit Spreads Portfolio. So I'll select that and click Insert. And now it's going to copy over the information for me into an entry field. So I'm going to buy the January 92 put and sell the January 95 put. I can select my number of contracts. Let's just go ahead and put in 10 contracts of the short put and the long put. Uh, current transaction date. If I entered this trade yesterday, if I'm putting this trade in manually, of course, I would just change the transaction date uh, to 1130, for example. And Put in your commission fees. If we're treating this as a paper trade, I'll just put in a commission fee of zero. And then, of course, the two premiums were copied over for us. Um, if I place this with my broker and I was able to get difference between the bid-ask spread, I would just uh, change my value. So I was actually, let's say, able to get uh, 265 for the short call, but I ended up getting filled at uh, 205. We'll just change those prices. And once I have the data correct, we'll click on Submit. And this is going to link the position into our profit and loss portfolio. So now notice up at the top here, we're in my portfolio, and we've uh, switched over to the profit and loss portfolio. And we see we have a variety of different uh, positions here. Um, should have, I haven't been keeping track of this one in the portfolio. You see I have some June positions that I haven't uh, deleted yet and some September positions that I didn't adjust. But our position that we just entered is down here at the bottom. It's showing it here first by each individual leg. So I have my our January 92 put, bought at 205. Current price right now is 197. So I've lost about eight cents just due to the bid ask spread or where I got filled to the bid ask spread. And then we originally sold the short put for 265, and it's showing us a current ask price of 267. So we'll have a <clears throat> gain of uh, two cents there, which is actually a loss. So we have a loss right now after we've opened the position of about $100 total, just due to the bid-ask spread. Um, we, I'm sorry, I should mention, of course, that we track the positions in the portfolio by trade. So you see that I'd have one short put, six bull put credit spreads, it's adding, I'm sorry, it's tracking it as linked trades, and then one bear call credit spread as well. Now, it's great to see them by each individual leg, but at the top of my portfolio, what I've selected here is the checkbox to view the position analysis. What that's done for us is it's added six extra columns over on the right-hand side. So let me scroll back down a little bit and move over. If you don't select that field, uh, the, the view position analysis, 
um, you'll just have this value. Everything over to the left of the highlighted line now is just what you'll see in the portfolio. When I check that box to view position analysis, I can now view the position as a whole, as a linked position between the two uh, legs. I'm sorry. So the position cost for a win position shows $600. Well, we originally collected about 60 cents of net credit, and we did 10 contracts. We collected $600. Our original expected gain was $600. If the stock stays above both put strike prices, both puts expire worthless which would be an expected 25% return. Now the next column we're shown is the liquidation value. If I bought to close my sold put right now and sold to close my long put, it would cost us $700. We'd have a loss of $100 or 16.7% of uh, our original uh, expected gain. The next thing we're shown is the future expiration value and the expiration gain or loss. This isn't projecting where the stock's going to be. It's saying if the stock stays at the same price it is right now through January expiration, which was at about 105, remember we sold the 95 put. So if the stock stays at the same price at January expiration, we'll realize the full profit on our linked position. Okay? So checking that view position analysis field gives you a view where you can view the position as a whole. If I'm tracking a uh, covered call, for example, it would show me the entire liquidation of both legs combined together. If I'm doing an iron condor, it would be all four legs combined together. All right. Now, some of the other features in the portfolio, if I wanted to, of course, I could select, select I apologize, various alerts. So you see here in the alerts column, uh, the September alert was triggered. That's because I didn't do anything as I got closer to September expiration. But I do have a December bull put credit spread here on FFIV. This was entered during a webinar, or paper traded entered during a webinar um, on 11.17. Um, and what we're going to look at there is we sold the December 105 put and bought the December 100 put. Um, and we received a net credit of 425. But I see that one of my alerts has been triggered. So let me go ahead and click on view. And this will pull me up to the alerts page. And I can set various alerts for the stock price limit if I have an upper or lower limit or change in the option prices, uh, leg number one or leg number two, the short option or the long option. Um, and in this case, on the short option, leg number two, I have a percent option change of about 80%. So if my option decreased by 80% or more, that's what the alert triggered. Okay, so let's go back to the portfolio there. And we originally sold this for 215 and bought the put for 130. So now we see that the because the stock's at 138, <clears throat> the ask price of our short puts now 25 cents. We've made 88.4% of what we expected to make on the short put. Now if I look at the position as a whole, we collected $425 of net credit, and right now we could close the position for hundred dollars. It costs us hundred dollars to close the position. So we've made 325, or 76.5% of what we expected to make on the position. So I can choose to do two things now. I could liquidate the position, or I could view um, particular, uh, I'm sorry, I could view potential rollout opportunities right from the portfolio. Before I go into that, what I wanted to do very quickly is I did add a couple questions come in. I want to respect everyone's time, <coughs> because we are nearing 1 o'clock, and I'm going to spend a couple minutes just going through some of the uh, analysis. Wayne asked Mike if we use a different broker. Can we use a paper account to track our real positions with our broker? Well, of course, Wayne. You can use any broker that you want to, and I highly recommend using the Power Options portfolio tools to track your positions. Most likely your broker will have a paper account as well. Um, but yes, you, can, you should be able to track paper positions and real positions with your broker, and you can do it on Power Options. And pretty much one thing that I'm positive of is uh, um, I'm sorry, is that what I'm going to show next with the rollout opportunities in the position analysis view, I don't think your broker will have that. Uh, Susan asks, is this is all in the archives? I, I think you meant archives, Susan. Yes, and remember when we were in that bold put credit spread, in addition to archive presentations we have on just using the Power Options tools that we're walking through today, there's also that two-part series in the webinar section underneath the Learning Center for Vertical Spreads Part 1 and Part 2. And then Susan also followed up after that uh, when I was going through quickly on the view. Not sure what you mean by it costs us $100 to close. What is the $100? Okay. 
when I opened this FFIV position, this paper trade, Susan, during one of the webinars, we did five contracts, okay? We sold the short put for 215 and bought the long put for $1.30. So my total net credit on the position was $4.25. Um, we received about $1,000 plus for selling the short put, and it cost us about $615 or so to buy the long put, or $650 for the long put. So our total net credit was $425. If I went to liquidate this spread right now, what the portfolio was showing me is the current gain or loss, or liquidation on the position right now, the current price of my short put is $0.25. Cents. So if I went to liquidate it right now, I have five contracts, um, so it would cost me $125 to buy to close my short puts, but then I'm going to receive $0.05 cents for selling to close the long puts for five contracts, so I'll receive $25 back. So it will cost me $125 to buy to close the short puts, and I'll receive $25 for buy and close long puts. So right now, if I liquidated the position, I'd have to pay $100 to close both puts. This $425 minus $425, when I sold the credit, that was put into my account immediately. So now if I close it for $100, I still keep $325 of the $425 credit we were, I collected up front. So I've made 76.5% of what I expected to make. However, I can also choose to leave it open for the next 17 days, and if the stock stays above 105, we'd receive that full profit. Okay, so I have a position here. It looks like one of those alerts has been triggered that I put into the uh, position. So what I want to do now is I looked at the alert to see which one was triggered, but now I want to say to myself, okay, I looked at the liquidation value, looked at my future expiration value. Are there any adjustments I could potentially make on this position? So what I'll do is I'll use that more information button here. When I go into position actions in the portfolio, I can choose to close the position, close the leg, delete the position if I'm just doing a paper trade, for example. Um, I can roll a leg and so forth. We want to link to right now is the position analysis screen. The position analysis screen will give you a breakdown of your current position. And it'll show you based on your original values um, where your position stands right now. So here at the top, again, is sort of the breakdown of that FFIV position. Um, originally paid 215, I'm sorry, originally sold the short put for 215, bought the long put for $1.30. My break even was 104.15. Here's our profit and loss chart over on the right. Original net credit was 85 cents, but remember there's 85 cents times five contracts. Um, and my original maximum risk was 415. So it just gives me a review of the position as I scroll down further we can get a little bit more in-depth view of the original position value that we saw in the portfolio is 425, that's the credit we received. Our current liquidation value, Susan, I think this is more along the lines of the verbiage you were looking for, our current liquidation value would be negative $100. We have to pay a debit of $100. Um, so our current liquidation profit would be 325. And if we held the position to expiration and the stock remained at the same price, we'd of course make the full profit of 425. Now, as I scroll down further, we're shown some potential condor opportunities on the FF5 uh, position, or the FFIV position. So we have a position that's profitable. We had sold the 105 put and bought the 100. And now we're shown we can convert this to a condor um, by selling maybe a 165 call for 20 cents, ugh, and a 180 call for 10 cents. So we're going to receive 10 cents of net credit just to bolster our return, but this is actually a 15-point spread. That doesn't really match what I'm looking for. So I can just look at some of the other comparisons. Um, here's one where the stock's at 138. You've got a 150 call that we could sell for $1.50, and then a 155 call that would cost 95. So we're adding almost an additional 91 cents, um, almost a dollar of net credit to this position, and we still have a 78% probability below. Well, it's great to see it numerically, but what if I want to compare this position and see what it would do to my initial bull put credit spread graphically? Okay, well, let's take a look at that 150, 155 call. I'll click that little more information button there next to this rollout opportunity, this condor adjustment opportunity, and we'll select simulate trade from that position analysis screen. What the simulate trade feature shows us is over on the left, I'm showing the original profit and loss for my 
bold put credit spread. Um, we again we have the maximum profit of 425. Uh, let me get the highlighter out there. I apologize. Let's do it that way. My original maximum profit of 425. Right now my current return is about uh, 15%, and the maximum return if the stock stays above 105 would be about 20.5%. And still, of course, maximum risk of 2,075. Now, over on the right, in the blue corner, we're shown what would happen to our position now that we're contemplating adding this bear call credit spread to create an iron condor. Well, now we have an upper and a lower break even on our position. Our maximum risk is now 1,800. Uh, the percent maximum return is 700, so we've moved it up from 425 to 700. Uh, to increase our total percentage return on the position. And as I scroll down below, we can see that graphically. Well, let me clear this up real quick. The red line, of course, the red hockey stick chart, this is just our original bull put credit spread. And then the blue chart that's laying on top of it, this is what the new position would look like if I added the iron condor. So what we've essentially done here, by adding a bear call credit spread to our existing position to create the condor, is we've moved our profit and loss plateau up to a higher level. But at the same time, we've capped, uh, we sort of have a position now where we have an upper break even and our lower break even as well. Um, so now we have to look at this position and say, well, I still think uh, FFIV is going to stay above my short put strike price at expiration and my bull put would be profitable. Is it worth it for me to enter into this iron condor? if I have any thought that stock might continue to move up in price, if I think FFIV might continue up and move above 150 by December expiration, I naturally wouldn't do this position. However, if I think it's going to stay within this range, it's going to stay above 105 and below um, 150, for example, and I'm comfortable with the net credit that it's going to add into my position, this might be an opportunity that I would consider adjusting to. Now, in addition to that, that's just looking at uh, some of the adjustments for the tracking the a bull put credit spread in the portfolio and looking at potential rollout opportunities. But all of that's available for all 23 strategies we support. If I'm tracking a married put um, and I look at it in the portfolio, I can go to that position analysis screen to see potential adjustments or rollout opportunities. I'm tracking a cover call, naked put, for example. I can go through the same processes. I can set different alerts. I can link to the analysis screen to view potential rollout opportunities and then compare them graphically as well so I can see what my position want to do. All right. Well, that's our basic introduction presentation. I'm going to navigate back over to our slideshow. Um, just have a few slides to wrap up with, uh, just some recap material. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and start writing them into the question pod. And we'll stay online here for another five, ten, or five or ten minutes or so, go to maybe about quarter after one. Um, well, let me just review here why power options. Well, you get a patented search of over 23 different strategies. Tools allow you to search across the universe of options. Um, you can customize the searches based on a variety of criteria in each strategy. And then you can also customize the screen view. Remember, we use that see more or less columns to select the different uh, data columns that we wanted to view for our research and analysis. We can compare the various strategies using the profit and loss chart to run the catastrophe report or using the one strike tool to look at different probabilities and combinations, whether I'm looking at a credit spread or a collar spread, for example, or if I'm doing covered calls even. Um, after I've identified a position, I can use a search by symbol tool to compare the probability versus risk versus return. And then those powerful portfolio tools to help you paper trade, track, and manage the position, set alerts as well and look at potential rollout opportunities. All the heavy lifting is done for you. Um, being able to search to just find those positions that match your personal risk reward tolerance, your probability preference, and then when you're tracking in the portfolio, all the math is done for you for the rollout opportunities, and you can see them graphically um, as well as numerically. We also offer toll-free customer and email support. Um, the access to the historical data you have during your trial accounts, but um, <clears throat> that's an additional fee, of course. It's, uh, I'll describe that in just a minute. And then, of course, you also have the help articles and strategy pages. Now, our subscription service is the 20-minute delayed service. It gives you access to all of the tools on the tool menu, all 23 different strategies and all available search and analysis tools. But with 20-minute delayed quotes, it's only $59.95 per month. And then, of course, you get a discounted annual rate, so it would be $600 for the year. So essentially, you're paying for 10 months but receiving 12 months of service. 
The real-time service, again, gives you access to all the tools on the tool menu with those real-time quotes. Instead of 20-minute delayed, is $79.90 per month, or of course $800 for the year. Now, access to the historical data is not included on the 20-minute delayed or the real-time subscription. If you're, uh, I'm sorry, if you're subscribed to the 20-minute delayed or the real-time, you can add the historical suite of tools, a three-month access for $99.95, which works out to be about $33 per month. However, if you're already on the real-time service, it's actually cheaper just to upgrade to the professional level of service. Um, it's only about $20 more per month. It's $99.99. The professional level of service includes everything you had on the real-time service, plus unlimited access to the historical suite of tools. And of course, the professional level of service also has the discounted annual rate. Now in the Power Store, I mentioned that earlier when we were on the main home menu. There are a variety of educational products there. The covered call course won't go too in-depth into that. No one said that they were doing covered calls and naked puts today. But this is a book, a DVD, and a workbook that was written by Ernie and Greg Zarenner. Um, the purchase includes two free months of power options. It's about the total cost with shipping of the cover call course is about $210. I believe it's $209.90, but that includes two free months of power options service. Uh, the blueprint, of course, is a full guidebook, is a full uh, sort of methodology that was written by Kurt Frankenberg on using a unique form of the married put system and then applying 10 different income methods on it to cancel the at risk. And then, of course, we also have a variety of low-cost books loaded with information, um, one on naked puts and one on protective option strategies using married puts and collars. Each of these books, I believe, is about uh, $13 or about $12.95. Um, then there's the Iron Condors book, as I mentioned, that was written by Mike Phillips and Ernie Zarenner. Mike Phillips is the head analyst over at Power Options Applied. Uh, and that's about 1995. These books not only discuss our philosophies on the different strategies, but they also go through how to use the Power Options tools to implement those strategies as well. Now, as we mentioned in the beginning, Power Options is a suite of tools designed for self-directed options investors. If you feel you're not ready to be self-directed, we do have an advisory newsletter service, Power Options Applied. Um, they offer several trade folios. There's an Iron Condor portfolio, Covered Call, double diagonal, for example. Um, there's one that uses collars on ETFs. Um, they pick the trades and send emails to their subscribers when they're going to roll the positions or adjust the positions. You can read more about that at poweroptionsapplied.com. And then, of course, Kurt Frankenberg, the gentleman I just mentioned who wrote the blueprint, um, who came up with the original idea of the unique form of the married put technique. Um, if you wanted to follow that, you could uh, subscribe to Fission. Uh, his service, which allows you to follow over his shoulder and watch him as he implements his trades in real time in the market. And you can read more about that at RadioactiveTrading.com. And of course, I just want to review our upcoming free webinars. Every Friday at 4.30, we host that open discussion. I don't have any planned material to teach. Um, I just, anyone can join us and uh, ask as many questions as you want. And I'll just use the Power Options tools to answer your questions. Typically every Wednesday at 12 noon, I do host the Introduction to Power Options presentation. It varies um, from week to week depending on who, or which strategy I should say, uh, wins out in the poll that we asked earlier. And then of course every Tuesday and Thursday, Kurt Frankenberg, every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, I should say, Kurt Frankenberg hosts his Introduction to Radioactive Trading. Now coming up in the new year, coming up in January, we're going to have other webinars during the week, some that are strategy specific um, in the evenings, maybe Thursdays at 9 o'clock or Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we also might be doing some Tuesday evenings as well around 9 p.m. Eastern Time or 6 p.m. Eastern Time, depending on the schedule. Now, of course, if I mentioned you have any questions, you can contact us, contact us at any time. You can send us an email to support at PowerOp.com. Or you can reach us uh, toll-free during market hours if you live in the continental U.S. at 877-992-7971. And if you live outside the continental U.S., you can reach us at 302-992-7971. There are contact links at the bottom of every page. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's essentially all I had for you today. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through while I was wrapping up. And we are about 15 minutes past our scheduled time. So I just want to remind anyone, if you think of any questions later, go ahead and send me an email, again, to support at powerop.com, or give us a call at the toll-free number. It's 877-992-7971 uh, or 302-992-7971.
Uh, Susan, thank you for your questions. I'm glad you got a lot of uh, useful information out of the presentation. I hope to see you again soon. And that goes for everyone else. Great, happy trading, everyone. I hope to see you at one of our next free presentations. Please let me know if you have any questions. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Good night.